Our mulberry wine is one year old. Time to take a taste. Now this is a very, very dry wine. This is 0.992. If you watched our bottling day video, which if you haven't seen it, I highly encourage you to. It's a it's little bit different. A laugh out loud riot. Kind of, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was drinking this during that and I gave a slight tasting note. So this is kind of, I have an unfair advantage here, but it's all right. But for the moment, um, this has to get into our glasses. So what yep. does that mean we need? Pour cam. So someday I'm going to have a clean pour and you're not going to know what to do with yourself. <laughs> In the meantime. It's gorgeous. Oh it's, yeah, the it's color this, on like, this. Opaque void. It looks like a Merlot. But it's, it's, you look through the side, you get that, that deep plum red yeah. color. And on the smell, it's just awesome. It's heady. Heady is the word I'm going to use today. Yes. It's, it's got a nice richness to it. Um, definitely a mulberry, almost grapey kind of thing. Like it, it, this is, this is more reminiscent of a grape wine than mulberry wine. Yeah. Like, oh, there's this issue between, is this a wine or is this not a wine? It's this a country is a wine, wine. Blah, 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 blah. Regardless, the aroma does not, for me, put it in a country wine category. It puts it more into no. and, a, a you know, wine. Let me just explain what this means. There, there's a lot of various definitions that have come down through the centuries over what's a wine. Now, my question is, if this isn't wine, then what is it? Because in order to be a cider, it has to have apple. In order to be wine, it has to have grape. So what is it? It's a wine. It's a fermented fruit into a liquid. It's wine. Now, I really didn't mean to bring this up because I know there's going to be a argument and, in yeah. the comments. And, and everybody and has their opinion. I go by mostly our U.S. government's regulation, which actually states this is wine. And if you look up the definition of wine, it says used to be exclusively grape, but now has been accepted to be other fruits. Now, I do agree that if you're going to call this a wine, you can't just say this is a bottle of red wine. You have to say this is mulberry wine or this is blueberry wine or red. I do agree on that. Absolutely. Just like cider. If I say this is a hard cider... It's expected to be apple. If I say any other fruit before then, it could have apple. It doesn't have to. That's my opinion. I know a lot of people are going to argue that. And, well, sorry. It's just the way it is sometimes. I love how I just try to coast over it and make it smooth as possible. And then, brain just comes right back. Like, These are the things. I'm like, okay. I'm you're, trying not to taste this yet. You're well, one. this is how it goes, you know? I, I, you're, the, you're doing it again. The, the thing you're is, it comes it up all the time. It comes up <laughs> all the time. And, you know... What, what do I call it? George? Steve? Michael. We'll call it Michael. Michael smells yummy. I mean, you know, it just, that's the point, is I just need to some descriptive term in order to be able to tell people what it is. It's dry, but it has a, a nice tannic mouthfeel. Ooh. The fruitiness comes through, though. It's, it, I'm really starting to appreciate these dry, dark reds. Welcome to my world. I like the dry, the dry reds. They just, they... Dry white tastes... Now, dry, the dry red, I dry really red. like it. Something about it. It just, it, regardless, I mean, this hasn't been aged for a year, but you see, this is where we need our, our, our tartness. I don't know. But it has a nice tartness from the mulberries, but the, the fruitiness of them is still there. So even though it's 992 gravity, which means there's basically not much sugars left at all, if anything, it still has just that hint of sweetness to it. Yeah, and it it's fifteen percent ABV too. It doesn't read mulberry for the, me. The tartness makes me think it, but if I didn't know, I might not think. But so, it yeah. definitely reads wine. And see, it, she's doing it now. And it reads like a, a, a wine quality, mm. not just some yeah. random stuff we threw this together. This ain't no two buck chuck. No, no. This is. This is, this is I'm not saying anything bad about two buck chuck. I, yeah. I don't know that I've had two buck chuck. I just know that this is better than most very inexpensive wines you could buy. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I wanted to tell you about the City Setting VIP Club. It's a super friendly bunch of brewers who get together and constantly help each other and share information. 
A large part of it is our private Facebook group where you can ask questions and get help. We also have Zoom meetings monthly for most tiers of membership. These hangouts are a great way to ask questions or just hang out with us and the other members. In addition, the higher tiers get their names right in our videos. So consider becoming a VIP. Now back to the video. Um, I'm getting super depth. I'm getting fruit, yep. juicy fruit. Got a really long finish too. And the tannins and the dryness are working together so lovely. It really grabs your mouth and says, I'm in here and it pay feels, attention. It feels voluminous. Voluminous. And that's why the sweetness level doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything's about that balance, you know? So we talk about that a lot. And sometimes you have to raise the sweetness to equal the acidity and the tannins. In this case, it's not that it's not acidic or tannic. It's very acidic and tannic. Yeah. But the sweetness is just high enough to keep it in check, where it's not so acidic. Like, definitely taste the acid, which is I think a, a refreshing for thing. For us, the comparison between a dry white and a dry red, particularly this kind of uh, red, is that the whites just kind of come off as astringent and kind of like just. The best dry white is 1.030 gravity or higher. <laughs> Numbers. I even, I even got that one, so, you know, hey. Um, where this is just, it's so rich and depth and flavorful and has so many different levels. I feel like it's aged beyond a year. I don't know if it would be any better in another year. No, that's not what I'm saying. You misread me. Hmm. I feel like my sensation, my my experience, oh, is that it's more aged. Is that okay. it's it's one of those beautiful wood casts that were stored in a warehouse for a I decade don't think or two. We put this on wood. No, I don't think we did either. I just it it, it right, mentally. I'm I'm trying to remember what we did. Okay, that's all. We intentionally don't look at last year's video before we do these before anybody freaks out on us. <clears throat> That's why we don't know. As far as the fruit notes, if I didn't know this was a mulberry, I would say it's like a plum grape hybrid. So I was gonna say blueberry. I'm, I'm not getting blueberry. I am getting the, the, the sharp tartness that doesn't really come from those, but though we did find out that plums are incredibly acidic, so yep. there's that. Uh, well, berries in general are, tend to be kind of acidic. Yeah. So, yeah, the acidity is definitely coming through from those. But yeah, you're, you're right. Um, I don't know that I could single it down to one particular fruit, really. Mm -mm. Even plum, I don't know that it plum fits it so well. Dark fruits, dark fruits dark is probably fruits. the easiest way to say it, which could mean anything from like dark cherries to dark blueberries to, to mulberries. mulberries to blackberries <laughs> to plums. Any of those fruits could... Like a mixture of those sure. is what I'm getting in here. Even yeah. like, you know, like I said, grapes. I'm, I, it, your brain will trick you. You will think this is a grape wine. Yeah. yeah. If you poured this for somebody who enjoys wine, they would not yeah. ever go, oh, is this made from grapes? They wouldn't question right. it. Like, it wouldn't even come up. You could be a Trixie Hobbitses with this one and say, here's a, a, a dark red and just leave it at that. Yeah, I don't like doing that to people. I don't like doing that either, but, but you could. Yeah, I like to tell people what it is. It's only fair, you know? <laughs> Especially what if there's allergies involved and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. mm -hmm. It's just, uh, dangerous t territory. The more I drink of this, the more I get like, when you first taste it, it's very quick. Like everything goes, and then you go, oh, that was just really good. Now I'm getting to stretch it out a little bit and getting a sweetness on the front end of the palate that wasn't quite so apparent before, but now it's definitely there. It feels like the more it coats all the parts of your mouth. It coats and soothes. It, it does. And the, the middle part is where I'm getting more of the tannins and the tartness of the wine itself. And I'm liking that. Uh, I, I think it actually is working really, really well because some of those fruity flavors of the mulberry are still coming through it. So you get like this really nice rich mouth feel with the, the yeah. fruitiness coming yeah. through. It's just it, really, really cool. I've noticed in my personal tastings lately that I haven't been expressing the different flavor notes in that 
I've been getting. And I think part of that is because it's difficult and your brain kind of like, it, it does this thing where it's trying to fill in the blank spaces. It's, it's got the mm-hmm. gestalt thing, but those little spaces, it's like, oh, let me put this word in there. And so for me, my brain kind of leans towards chocolate when I get the, the tannic uh, sweet I, I, combo. I, yeah. And then it's like, no, it's not chocolate, and then just disregards it. But it keeps coming back to that to try to use that as a defining word. I wouldn't say chocolate. I would say cocoa. Cocoa. Okay, fair enough. Because chocolate infers a sweetness right. and other things. But cocoa, right. I definitely... Because cocoa and coffee are two flavors that you actually get in mm-hmm. wine mm-hmm. pretty frequently, even though there's no cocoa or, or coffee in them. Mm-hmm. They're also related, which is in- interesting. But... Not the wine, you know what I mean. So I don't, I can't discount that because I kind of get where you're coming from. Right. That. Um, the fruitiness of a cocoa, a cocoa or a coffee even right. is sort of there. Yeah. It's that deep, dark thing that's just, just kind of under the surface. It's not really like it tastes like coffee or, or a cocoa. No. But if you think real hard, you go, yeah. I kind of get it Shades a little of bit. Adjacent to yeah. <laughs> the finish is shockingly long. Yeah, it stays with you. And as you breathe out, that's about the only element of ethanol that I'm detecting. Like mm-hmm. this is fifteen percent. This should be detectable for alcohol. It doesn't really come across that way. No, I think you could drink a good amount of this and then go, oops. Yeah, I think I proved that the other day. I had two, <laughs> two rather large glasses of it. Uh, food pairing, absolutely. No problem with food pairing with this one. You're going to want what, though? stronger flavors, uh, tomato sauces. Italian food. Be it Italian or Actually, you know what? Spanish. You know what would be perfect? A glass of this and a loaf of garlic bread. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all I need. Brian, Brian could easily and happily make a whole meal out of a loaf of bread. But, hey. Oh, garlic bread and bruschetta both. Bruschetta. Yeah. So that way you, you have... You have. Well, you take the loaf, you split it in half. One <laughs> side is garlic bread, the other side is bruschetta. And a couple... And, and some of this. Of two, two, and three. if you have a couple two tree of these, you won't even care anymore. <laughs> 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 All right. So enough of that. Let's get to numbers. Numbers? Oh, yeah, we have to put numbers on this. Yep. So this is not a... Oh, we don't have a recreate, recreation thing on this. This is just a uh, enjoyment level. Mm-hmm. All right, our scoring system is very, very simple. One through 10 with the occasional 11 being reserved for those that are just amazing. I tend to think of it this way in like two, three categories. Um, a one through four-ish is kind of like, eh, not really that good. We weren't that impressed, right? A one, you're probably gonna dump out. A four is borderline like, oh, would I drink it? I don't know. Five to say like eight is kind of a, yeah, this is good. I would I would drink that if it was handed to me, or you know, I might even think to drink that. I don't know. Above eight is pretty much I want that. That is that that right there. I want that. So that's kind of how I do it. So I could give you like a one, two, or three score, but instead we're gonna go one through four, all the way to ten, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? I, I keep changing our, it's all... our system, but it really isn't. It's a refinement of the same system that I've been using all this time. Because off screen, he's tried to change the system entirely, and I'm like, no. But I guess the point is, don't put too, you know, like people put a very fine point on the score. And like the difference from a six to a seven really doesn't mean that much. Especially if we gave it a six last year and it's a seven this year. It really doesn't mean anything because our tastes have changed. Yes, the wine has changed, but our tastes have changed. Our perceptions have changed. Right. And it's a, Unless we had last year's bottle in front of us, which right. we don't have a TARDIS yet, as she said, to taste alongside this, we can't possibly compare them side by side. So we do the best we can to be as impartial as we can. So if you've grown alongside us in the last five and a half, almost six years, by the way, wow. Um, so if we did have a TARDIS, yeah. in theory, we could go back, get this exact bottle. Yeah. We could taste the same, well, but once you put it next to itself, Does doesn't the, that cause a, like some sort of a... I don't know. If they touched or something. I thought it was the people couldn't do it, but objects, it doesn't matter. I don't know, because now you have two objects sharing the same exact um, 
Okay. Matter. Okay. Forget the TARDIS. We'll that could, we'll that be, could be a problem. we'll go into the Star Trek realm because remember when Spock came Spock back? Did see, did see himself. Yeah, and and then the and the new Spock said, "Well, how did you?" And he's like, "I I alluded that there would be a problem, but there was not. There wasn't a problem." That's true. <laughs> yes, I am that kind of dork. Anyway. Okay, so now we're done talking about pairs of ducks. Pairs of ducks. Numbers. Are you ready? Um, I guess I'm torn between a couple of things here, but I, all right, I'm I'm good. One, two, three, nine, nine point five. Ooh. I was torn between like nine and ten because it's really hard for me to say what would make this better. What is what is wrong with this to not be a ten? And I really don't have an answer. That's a good question. I don't, I don't have an and answer that, to that either. You know, going from that perspective, mm. you're going to have a lot higher numbers. Going from the perspective of, let's start everything at a five and go up or down from there. If I start from a five, I say, okay, well, this has the fruity notes. It's really, really nice, very smooth, not a lot of ethanol. So the points just go up, 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 up. But if I start at 10, like if I assume it, this is perfect. We go backwards. What am I taking points off for? Sure, and this is personal preference, so this is like our enjoyment level. And for me, if Brian had made this big dinner, he says, "Okay, find a wine to pair for that." Yoink! Yeah, I would totally grab this, and so that would elevate it to a ten. Right now, if I just wanted to chill and have something, just a drink, just just for okay S's and G's, then maybe I would select something else. So you're saying this is like kind of a little bit more of a sophisticated kind of thing. Not so much for relaxation. For me personally. I See, I'm not against that. I enjoyed this the other day when I was working and I was drinking it. Drinking it alone right now, I'm not enjoying it quite as much because I'm thinking about it more. And that that's a very interesting perspective that I'd never really considered before. So you're saying with food, you would enjoy this more Absolutely. than without food. I can totally see that. And I think that might have been the kind of thing that was holding me back at, at making it a 9.5 because I'm like... My memory of this the other day, I liked it better. Like, I was expecting to go 10. And I think that's because, like you said, you weren't thinking about it. You were just enjoying it. And it was you were, nice. You were preoccupied by other things. Right. Uh, when I am focused on a beverage, I tend to intellectualize it and have, like, a mental conversation with it. And so... Right. Oh, I want to bring something up. Go ahead, Bart. Someone asked, how come we don't give as many 10s and 11s anymore? Did we go backwards in brewing? Okay, no. No, we just got more critical. <laughs> I think critical. we got more critical. <laughs> and we also learned quite a bit more in that time period. And maybe, I hate to say it, but we might have been a little hasty in giving some of those 10s and 11s on occasion. Like, this is one of those that, this is such a finely crafted wine. Also, I think we could be a 10. In increasing our experience and our varying degrees of sophisticating and brew making, uh, finding that, oh my gosh, this is really good note isn't so unusual because they're all pretty yeah, much good. Yeah, they're all getting pretty good. So now we have to be more critical of what we're doing. So so rather than going backwards yeah. as that An 11 commenter, from three years ago might be an eight today. Right. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's worse. It yeah. just means that our we perception get, of it is different. We get pretty good brews on a regular yeah. basis. But when they're bad, we tell you. Didn't we just have like a two and a three? Shh, just like last week or Sunday, something? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Oh yeah, that's right. But they'll have already seen this. That's right. Past Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so something else that we wanted to do since it's come up quite a bit is at this point in the video, I am going to look up our old recipe for this and see what we said. So here we go. I'm probably going to fast forward quite a bit because this is a 42 minute video. Or just no? cut to the chase. I'm going to cut ads. Expedia. Ooh, your trip. See, we get them too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go towards the end here. We're sweetening. Okay, we're talking about. I don't need the ABV. And I, I really am watching it. See? We're saying a lot of the same things. <laughs> we said it tastes more like a grape wine than a mulberry wine. I gave it a nine. I don't know. I have to go back and find out. 
Okay, okay. Here we are. We're getting ready to give a score. Come on. One, two, three, nine. nine. Okay. We were very close last time. So it, I went up by half a point. Yeah. You gave it a nine. I gave it a 9.5. Last time it was nine and nine. Very, very close. I, I am not disappointed. Yeah. The tasting notes that I was hearing were all the same thing too. Like it almost tastes barrel aged. It almost tastes yeah. like we're tasting the fruity notes it still coming like through. A, uh, tastes more grape. like a grape wine. Mm, yeah. So very similar. The fact that I went up half a point must say that it, it either improved or my taste for red wine have gone up. Or your taste for dry red wine. Yeah, that's what I mean. Dry red stuff. All right. Well, Dunzo. anything else you want to say on this? No, I think we're good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.